Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Aram and this is Marcus Brown. This is what he wrote in his email. He said, I'm an elite rower of Pen AC. I've just been getting back on the water and it seems like my boat feel has improved a lot. I want to know what you think needs improvement. I've noticed that my flexibility in the posterior chain lacks the strength to support my quads thrust. Lately, I've been working on all the little muscles that support the main muscle groups required for rowing. Marcus, here we go. What is your opinion as my community? What do you think Marcus should work on? I think if you look at his body, his rowing, the feel he has at the catch, this is quite exceptional. It's really good. What I like especially, Marcus, is the way you connected the finish and right there. This connection is beautiful. Um, this is something we can all look at. So what I really like is the way he positions his shoulder. I see a lot of athletes doing this at the finish and they think, okay, my shoulder goes back. I have a longer stroke. I'm in a better position. But in the end, it's hard to breathe, it's not comfortable, and you're super stiff. It doesn't make you very effective. So what I'm looking for is a super well-connected finish position with the shoulders actually being slightly, slightly hunched over. I don't say you should do this, no. The rib cage is still open. You should have a proud, proud open rib cage here to finish. Nevertheless, the shoulders should be here. They shouldn't be there. And that makes a huge difference in terms of unnecessary shoulder motion. And Marcus, this is very good. The next thing I like is the way you connect the chest bone with the feet. There is a visible full straight connection and I like that. So at a point of time where the blades exit the water, there is still a very good posture you can hold. Let's move on. You don't lose that posture. As you go forward, what I like now is at this point of the stroke, have a look at the shoulders. The shoulders are loose and relaxed. That's important. There is a bit of a pre-stretch in the lap. Everything around the armpit is stretched forward. And it's not over the top, but it's from the low up. Excellent job to you and your coach. Well done. Now you still hang loose. This is good. However, Marcus, and now we talk about the things that simply prevent you from going ultra fast. I talk about the problems first, then I talk about the solutions. Problem number one, the way you drive leads to the point where all the leg drive you apply basically gets your blades deeper into the water. So all the leg drive you apply here leads to the point where your hands go up because your shoulder is in a rotational motion. So the shoulder rotates, the hands go up and this pushes the blades deeper into the water. It does create the sensation of, wow, I'm super well connected. But be careful, if you feel this, it doesn't mean that you have a, a nice horizontal connection. What I'm looking for, it only means you're killing fish. You're getting deeper, 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 deeper. And the problem is we are misled by that feeling say wow great connection let's just push some more and look what happens with the body i know marcus you're looking out now it doesn't matter pattern is pattern muscle memory is muscle memory so you are you do get the oars to bend now this is good however where's the pivot now we need a full pivot which goes from slightly forward to backward. However, you start straight and go a bit backward, which means you're doing a downward motion with the shoulders. And this is gonna bring your hands down, no matter what. You can try to pull high as much as you want, it isn't gonna work. But if you go from forward to backward, once you have reached a backward position, you have already disconnected, and therefore it helps you to get the blades out of the water. You know, it's a different timing and therefore a different effect because the early part still keeps the shoulder somewhat straight. And that makes a lot of difference in terms of speed. If it's not logical, just put it in the comments below. I try to make it more obvious. Again, very nice connection here to finish. Let's look at the problem once more. It's that. 
This is it. If this is how you start a stroke, you lose a lot of time, A, by digging too deep, and B, by taking forever to get a horizontal connection. And you also see there's a lot of drag from the shaft. See how much of that ore is actually covered. This is almost half the ore being in the water. This is a problem. And you don't do this now just because you're looking out. You're doing it because this is the way your muscles are wired at the moment. There are many more things to talk about, you know, despite the fact that your rowing is great, but this is not good and it costs you a lot of speed. The question is, how can we solve this one problem? Because a lot of you rowers have these. We just had the training camp in Vienna last week. Beautiful weather, awesome camp. Um, was great to have everybody here. And a lot of athletes had exactly that problem. And this is how we solved it. So everything starts as usual with the recovery. Because this is where you can reset every stroke and get everything right. When you move out forward, uh, we just talked about this just half an hour ago at the uh, live indoor training session. All right, stroke rate 16. I hold this every Saturday, actually a couple times a week, where you can join row online with your indoor rower, with your by rower, and I work live with you on technique. And we just talked about this with the knees bending at a point of time where the upper body isn't prepared. You see that? The upper body is straight and the knees already start to bend. And this leads to the point where you lose tension in the hamstrings and glutes. And therefore you lose control over the boat because the boat still it floats, that's true. But you don't accelerate it a second time. You know drive cycle has two acceleration times. The first one is you anchor the blade and propel the boat past the anchored blades. Second is you use your heavy weight and no matter how light you are, you know, even if you're around 50, 45 kilos body weight, it is still a lot more than that light single of yours, which weighs between 13.5, 14 is the legal FISA weight, all the way up to 16, 18 kilos. So of course you can use your body weight as a mass anchor, but only if you create the right tension, which means you have enough body tension to move the boat along. So the idea is that you sit still and you create enough tension here in the glutes right there and as you move forward you you pull the boat gently towards the bow not a new phenomenon valerie kleshnev actually made a research that he, he basically said if you do it right the boat is the fastest just before the catch in a race pace you know but only if you have the right tension now as we move forward and that's your problem marcus you're you're loosening up your shoulders a bit too late and you're more, you're more coming from the upper side of the shoulders, not from the armpit. And the way you should approach the recovery would be with that good finish position. You should move out the hands and then gradually, like a cat, relax the shoulders and get a bit, don't pull with the hands forward because this is what you do. You become too stiff then. Roll the shoulders forward and pull with the forearm on the triceps, on the triceps and lat, you know. Let me zoom out. So this is how you do it. You roll forward and go this way forward instead of being too stiff here. Because if you're too stiff here, you become round. But if you go from the lower end, you can actually open the rib cage, open wide, spread the wings, open the arms to the side. This is how you should approach the catch. And if you do this, all the body weight is on the seat. Ladies and gents, I hope this makes sense. Um, if, if not, just please drop it in the comments and say, Aram, could you put it in a different way? I certainly will. Okay, so problem number one, knees bent too early. Problem number two, too stiff in the shoulders, push down. At the same time, uh, I think you've all seen that the, the blade is not in the right position. You need space. With the blade, you need space. There's no other way. At this point of time, in my humble opinion, you shouldn't have straight arms. You should have slightly bent arms. Pull with the forearm, but have heavy elbows, because this allows you to have a bit of a stretch on the triceps, armpit, lat. Follow the recovery a bit more. What you do well then is you move, as I call it, lethargically heavy. And this is the best thing you can do in a boat because the water is a slow element. Don't try to move dynamically in the boat. Nothing that happens with water is quick and dynamic except for a creek, but you're not a creek. You want to move in a slow, lethargic element with a lot of inertia. So 
move the same way adapt your body motion to that element you're you're yeah, you know you're moving it you know you're not you're not in the air you're in the water everything happens slowly but steadily and having that heavy shoulder girdle now is a good thing however if you do it now marcus follow the way the shoulder girdle is traveling it's actually there's a bit of weight onto the hands if we move forward you see this Whoa. and this is how you get the blades off the water at this point of time however from three quarter slow stroke to to full slide you need enough space between your shaft and the water to square anytime you want and that wasn't possible before if you go back a couple of seconds you see the water the blade was actually almost touching the water so you see it's not when coaches yell you say blade height it's not for the beauty it's to allow you to open up the arms because now Marcus can't open up the arms Marcus you can't all you can do is just push down and that's the wrong tension in the arms so wrong tension in the arms leads to the point where you're still pushing down at a point of time where you should get some pre stretching here triceps lat shoulder girdle you want to get the same stretch you will have then at the catch but at the catch switching so quickly from pushing to pulling it is not possible you know and we're talking about low rate here we're not talking about a stroke rate 40. so at this point of time you want to start the drive and this is something i repeat in a lot of videos at this point of time you want to start the drive but where's the blade now it is almost where it should have been all the way through the drive all the way through the recovery and it isn't at this point of time the blade should be halfway in the water so it should be about here but it isn't and the reason why it isn't is because now your muscles are busy a stabilizing your body because all the tension and weight is very high up and b the seat starts to move out already because you want to start a drive and then there's here the wrong tension so there's energy traveling excuse my ugly looking arrows there's energy driving forward but you don't have a stretch it's not like your hands stretch these muscles you will need then for the drive no it isn't happening and then of course we see the result you start to drive and you got to prepare somehow you got to get that weight off the hands somehow and it happens with the upper body pivot and then the cycle continues with the leg drive when you do an upper body pivot so basically the upper body is moving upward the blade goes deeper into the water with every bit of leg drive you apply good and this is whoop, deeper and deeper see the effect the, the simplest way to solve this is be clean in a recovery have light hands try to be have enough space between your right now you need enough space to start to move the hands up and get more stretch and move them out at this point of the time the shoulders are too tight the blade is too close to the water how high should it be off the water i'm looking mostly at the shaft so this part right there the shaft should always be so high off the water that you can square your blade anytime and still have half of the blade space between the lower edge of the blade and the water so let's move a bit forward i can show you better then forward 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 Duck. so during the middle of the recovery not at the catch but now i can show you you should have the shaft is here and you should have the full blade height plus half a blade height so this is about the space you need all the time because this is the only way you can square and open the arms and this gets you the right tension here and then you're super quickly prepared at the catch i see a lot of coaches yell at athletes say hey quicker at the catch harder leg drive harder leg drive well you know what harder leg drive leads to more dead fish <laughs> working that blade into the water and now some of you may say well mahi dry still grows this way 
Mahe Drysdale is a super fit, phenomenal, exceptional athlete. I do not think that his technique in the single, specifically referring to that Henley race, is super efficient. But in a single skull, a lot of things work. But ultimately, my personal opinion is that it is not super efficient. The less time you need to connect horizontally with the blade, this is why there are Randall foils, you just put them on top, you feel where to stop, um, the, the faster you're going to be. Because just because you get the stroke rate up, it does not mean that this connection here, reducing downforce and getting some stretch, it's a matter of you know, signals in the muscles. And these signals won't travel any quicker and the muscles won't react any quicker just because you get up to stroke rate. All right, ladies and gents, I hope this was interesting. Marcus, awesome rowing for the rest. I'm sure you're going to make it to the top. I wish you all the best. And if you want to join the live indoor coaching sessions, go online, armtraining.com, all the links there. And if you want to send me your video for analysis, please go to armtraining.com. There is a dedicated section called video analysis. If you want to work with me remotely doing your training planning and your video analysis on a frequent basis just for you, go to armtraining.com as well or send me a message. Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest, Reddit. I think I have them all. All the best to you. Looking forward to see you soon. Bye-bye.